People of the internet, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Toddy. I'm an application security engineer, yada, 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 all that fun stuff, right? If you haven't already noticed, I made a video introducing application security. It'll be somewhere at the top there. And uh, I want to get into a series whereby we cover technical topics within application security that I bump into when I'm studying or at least doing an engagement. And in this video, we're going to be looking at insecure decentralization with the focus on the NPM package node serialize. If you see me looking at side, I'm lazy to set up everything. I'm looking at a script. So you may be wondering what is deserialization. And in simple terms, it is when someone can manipulate stored data to run their own code in your application. It's like giving someone the keys to your house, except that you don't actually want to give someone keys to your house. So the question could be, how does this happen? With regards to the NPM package, the node serialized, the unserialized function is the culprit. It's like an open door for any code that comes through during the deserialization process. If an attacker can control the input to this function, they can sneak in their code and in the worst case scenario, they get RCE. And I think it's worth mentioning that in most cases, deserialization vulnerabilities lead to RCE. And it's not just in JavaScript, there's C, PHP, Java, and all these other languages that may contain this vulnerability based on the implementation. Now that we've introduced this node serialized package and we know what deserialization is, I'm gonna go into the demonstration part of this. I'm gonna be using Hack the Box. With that being said, let's get started. All right, people, this is now the demonstration and I'll be using the Hack the Box machine Celestial. It is a retired machine, 10.10.10.85. And if we come here to our virtual machine and we cat the nmap initial scan, you can see that there's only one port that is open and that is port 3000, no JS express framework. You can see nothing fun about that. And if we go to the web application and refresh, it spits out the same thing. You can try drug tree boot forcing, you won't find anything. But once we start to look at the requests, I usually like having these on the side. The only thing you can see is some sort of cookie. The response is a three or four, not modified. You can only send get requests. We can try change this. How do you change request type? We can send this to repeater. We could try change the request type, change request method to post, and you get four for not found. And it says cannot post at the bottom. I hope you can see this. I hope it's not too small. But if we change this back to a get request, the one thing we can see is that we have a cookie that has the variable profile set, right? If we send this to the decoder, you could try to see what is going on. And I think this is base64. Yes, it is base64. And now you see that there is something that is actually there that we can read. It says username is dummy country. I don't know, probably somewhere dumb city, lame town, number two, right? And there's a bunch of this stuff at the end. And if you look back at the response here, you can see that there's dummy and a couple number twos on the page. So we could try to change some of these values and see what we get. And so let's do that. Let's change this. Hello, Toddy. And then we encode this as base 64 copy the entire thing are we gonna send it to the repeater yes send to repeater and then paste it and see what it gives us and unfortunately that did not work it gave us some sort of error message and if you see here you might start to realize that it is using the node serialized package you can go ahead and read the rest of the error message but that is usually all you need it is unserializing and serializing data in some sort of way so if we do this correctly we might be able to inject right whatever we need in there and i think this was url encoded as well so i'm gonna change this to url and then base 64 and see if the stuff at the end goes away yes the stuff at the end does go away so we could change some of these values let's change the values that we can see here on the web page so we're gonna change this to toddy and then the number we are going to change it to 90. so we want to decode or encode rather as base 64. copy the entire string come back to the repeater 
this is such a small screen but it is what it is and hopefully this time it does not give us an error message and it does not it says hey toddy 1990 is 1990 bad arithmetic but we were able to inject something so the trick with deserialization is you usually want to have access to the code for the application so that you can copy how the application serializes and deserializes data but in this case we don't but we know that they're using node serialize so we can make a small script so that we can serialize our own data and feed it to this and it gets deserialized and the back end I already have a script ready so let me just copy and paste that so usually first thing you want to try and check for when you know that the application is deserializing serializing data is some sort of rce can you perform actions on behalf of the application and usually one thing to check is can you ping yourself can you reach outside of the network and at the same time can you perform actions on behalf of the application so usually i start with the ping that c1 so that it stops after sending a couple of packets and my ip address is 10.10.14.11 and uh we can save that and if we catch serialize there we go we can sudo tcp dump if i can type dash the dash i times zero i think that's it there we go we have that but we still need to run the serialized thing though okay so before we run the sudo tcp dump which we can do in another pane go back to this pane we want to run this serialized package node serialize whatever and whatever it spits out is the serialized version of what we want which is this part right here right here right all the way until here that should be it so we can come back here come to a decoder and uh where did we inject these numbers so we can first try with the number or the name i don't think it matters but we'll see we inject that right. pretty long string and then we encode base 64 copy it go back to our repeater fingers crossed this works the first time and we send it and we get an internal server error unexpected token can we see if we pinged ourselves and voila even though it got the error we were able to ping our machine so now that we can ping our machine we can reach our own network from the machine and two we can perform actions on behalf of the application rce we can look for payloads that we can use to get reverse shells we can go back down here close that we don't need the pseudo tcp dump anymore but what we do need is a reverse shell to listen on so i'm listening on port 9000 i have bash aliases to make things easier for me so nano that and we can remove this ping the one trick you need to know when um you submit this payload let's do that let's 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 run this first and i'll let you know so we go back to our burp suite decoder and um what you want to replace so the trick here is that this is going to call the function but if you put it like this it won't work you need to open and close curly braces so that the function calls itself and again hopefully this works first time it never usually does when you're demonstrating things so uh let's let's try let's try and see what this does paste that send it and it has not come back which means hopefully we got a shell on this machine and we did we come back who am i we are sun all right people now that we've seen how the exploitation of this vulnerability works for the most part let's go through something that is just as important which is mitigation so i'm going to be reading here so excuse me if i look aside but the first thing you want to do is validate your input ensure all inputs especially cookies are properly validated before use in this case the application should not blindly trust the cookie value right 
in my experience cookies are where most of these deserialization vulnerabilities are found and then use safe deserialization functions or packages in this case we could use secure json parse or you know node keep node.js or whatever dependencies or applications you're using up to date this was cv 2017 5941 so it's pretty old but whatever package you use and external dependencies keep those up to date and then another thing is that we should ensure the application is using the least privileges possible don't give it root access if it does not need root access and then use secure configurations disable or limit functions that can execute system commands such as child process packages exec function in node js that's probably it i will make a more detailed blog or put it in writing for those that prefer that that'll be out sometime after this video before not too sure but um i hope you enjoyed this quick demo dirty i know but uh catch you in the next one peace